solar panels where planes take off and land, and a buyer's club to spark demand for sustainable aviation fuel. These are among 15 recommendations covering three areas to help decarbonize Singapore's aviation sector. Uh, the first area is uh, Changi Airport itself. Now, among the suggestions you see made by the International Advisory Panel is installing solar panels on the airfield. Now, these can help power operations at the airport. Uh, vehicles on the tarmac, like baggage tractors, uh, to switch to cleaner energy options. Uh, the panel also suggests looking into a facility that converts waste into energy for a more circular and efficient use of resources. Now, zooming into the airlines next to help signal that demand for sustainable aviation fuel is rising. The panel suggests setting up a buyer's club for early adopters in Singapore. Now, this can later be expanded to the region. On the supply side, it suggests developing a roadmap to secure the long-term supply of sustainable aviation fuel. A technical centre to build Singapore's capability in aircraft technology should also be set up. Uh, finally, optimizing air traffic management. The panel says helping airlines plan more direct, efficient routes, as well as optimizing the descent of arriving aircraft, will help reduce fuel burn and emissions. Uh, Singapore's Transport Ministry will work on how to incorporate these recommendations into a sustainable blueprint for the sector, which will be out early next year. Well, for more on all this, we're joined by Rebecca Mateo in the studio. Rebecca, how significant are these recommendations for Singapore's aviation sector? Yeah, thanks, Rachel. So, so these suggestions are actually put together within six months and they have organised several meetings and as well as deep dive sessions. And these sessions have involved many key industry players in the sector. So they come from the aviation industry and as well as energy industry. And they gave very important inputs. And these recommendations actually serve to push the industry towards using more efficient, energy efficient energy resources and also to minimise waste while also highlighting some infrastructure that will facilitate the move towards sustainability. And that would actually enhance Singapore's position as a premium air hub. And also, while we are already one of the world's best airports, we have one of the world's best airports, mm -hmm. the move towards greener aviation sector will actually give Singapore a competitive advantage. It will open doors for more opportunities and also new jobs that will centre around the sustainability, sustainability in this sector. And the chairperson of the International Advisory Panel for the Sustainable Aviation Hub actually says that it is, this is an urgent need to start studying these recommendations in greater detail. And that's also because of climate change and in particular, the aviation industry is very much affected by climate change. It can affect their infrastructure and also flight management. I think it's timely that Singapore, being a you know, regional, not only regional, could be even the global aviation hub. I think we need to really tackle this issue uh, very urgently. So I think the establishment of the IP is very timely, and we were able to gather, you know, the right uh, so-called uh, participants. So they are not just local, but also have international aviation bodies, and we have industry, and we also have a knowledge partner. Now, Rebecca, have there been any challenges or obstacles uh, that they foresee when it comes to implementing these recommendations? For example installing solar panels on the airfield. Yep, so most of these recommendations actually suggest doing studies on how to explore the solutions that can be implemented. And there are some things that are more doable because it's building on existing infrastructure, but others will require fundamental changes to infrastructure and that will not be easy. For example, there are already solar panels over at Changi Airport, it's installed on its roof, but now what the panel is suggesting is actually having solar panels on the airfield, and that includes your runway, your taxiways, and also even areas covered by water. But the challenge here is that solar panels are reflective and it may make it unsafe for pilots trying to take off or land. And another issue is also the location where the solar panels are placed to optimise energy transmission is actually very important because if they are spread too far apart, it will not be practical. And so far, no countries have actually done this in their airfield. And if Singapore managed to do it, we might just be the first. And another one will be on the use of sustainable aviation fuel, which is produced from used cooking oil and waste animal fats. And they are blended with refined jet fuel. Singapore already has a facility here to produce, but it is not enough. 
You can think of the cost in terms of the immediate financial impact of some of these measures, but we also need to think of the longer term or maybe not even so long term impact on the environment and how it affects us. And also we need to look at the relative competitive landscape because we need to move in order to ensure the sustainability of our air hub so that you know, we are able to hold our own within the global context. Oh, Rebecca, uh, back to the sustainable aviation fuel, you mentioned we are not pro producing enough. And prior to that, Jill was mentioning uh, the, the, the need to both increase demand as well as supply of sustainable aviation fuel. What are some of the challenges to scaling up? Well, let's just look at supply first. Yeah, I mean, in terms of that, cost is an important consideration and sustainability does come at a price. We've been talking about that for a very long time. <coughs> And right now, the such production of such fuel is less than 1% and it's looking to have about 10% by 2030. And that's also partly because of that such fuel is about three to five times more expensive than fossil fuels. And the challenge is really in getting companies on board to embark on producing more of such fuel. But to do that, we also need to encourage demand so that we'll be able to drive costs down. And, but before all that is done, it is possible that travelling may become more expensive. But let's say it's successfully scaled, um, it can be more affordable to travel sustainably. And business-wise, it can also offer more competitive advantage because airlines passing through Changi Airport may want to tap on our sustainable aviation fuel. And the Transport Minister is Warren actually says that there's a need on a broader picture to think about the longer-term impact and how it affects us. And with all these suggestions, what's next for the industry? With all these uh, suggestions, it's actually a call to the industry, to the businesses and as well as international partners and students even to pick up the right skill that can match uh, what is needed and required by the um, aviation industry. And now the Ministry of Transport and Singapore Civil Aviation Authority Authority will be actually studying the recommendations from the International Advisory Panel. And it will take time for the suggestions to come to fruition, if at all, because they must be supported by policy and regulation and industry players will have to work together. And there must also be necessary infrastructure to, and to make sure that our people are actually ready to take up these new jobs in the sustainable sector. And all of them will be part of the Singapore Sustainability, Sustainable Air Hub blueprint that was set up in 2030 and 2050 sustainable goals. And they will have more detailed plans on how these goals can be reached and how the solutions can be implemented. And Transport Minister S. Warren actually says that uh, the report will be part of the blueprint that will be released early next year. And this will actually signal Singapore's commitment towards sustainability within the aviation ecosystem. And various air hubs around the world will seek to differentiate themselves and those who are able to implement effectively a sustainability program are the ones that will really command greater attention and will be stronger competitively. What this blueprint allows us to do, and the advice of our international advisory panel is helpful in this regard, is that it will help us to start identifying where are the skill sets, the needs that we need to address, the kind of jobs that we can create, and also the kind of opportunities that can come about. Rebecca Mateo on uh, the recommendations covering three areas to help decarbonize Singapore's aviation sector.